This is the new Plastic Panther Tank Platoon box set for German forces in Normandy. While Battlefront have had a Plastic Panther in their range since 2012, this is a new tooling for some parts. This earlier Panther A kit adds Zimmerit anti-magnetic mine paste on the hull and turret. While there were only a few Panthers in Normandy on D-Day, they were well suited to use their long-range 7.5cm guns over the open fields around Caen to hold up the Allied advance off the beaches. If we look at the back of the box, there is an image of a completed kit and an exploded assembly diagram. You can see the blocky shape of the Zimmerit coating on the completed kit. The box contains five Panther 7.5cm tanks, one decal sheet and four unit cards. There's also a hard plastic tank commander sprue. Although Battlefront are moving to more generic naming of their kits, this kit actually builds a Panther Ausfahrung A. This is the mid-production type. It has the later domed cast commander's coupler, the ball-shaped MG mount on the hull, angled hull hatches, and no mantlet chin armour. Let's look at the plastic. Each tank comes on three sprues of mustard-coloured plastic. Two of these sprues are from the previous Panther G kit. These have the tracks and running gear as well as exhausts, main gun, side skirts and other details. The track pieces are one-piece parts. Track detail is good and the road wheels are fine. No problems here. There is additional tread detail on the top and around the drive wheels on the track. However, this becomes just simplified bars down and around beneath the track run. This simplified detail shouldn't show up too much on the table. The detail sprue is fine. You get two hull MG ball mounts, one with Zimmerit and one without. It also has the 8.8cm gun for the Jagdpanther as well as the 7.5cm for the Panther. This and a lot of the other parts on this sprue will be for the spares box as this kit doesn't include a Jagdpanther hull option. There are also spare track links and road wheels for stowage. The new plastic in this kit is this final sprue. It has the new upper and lower hull, hull rear, mantlet and turret pieces. These all have Zimmerit moulded onto the vertical surfaces. Zimmerit was applied in many patterns, but this kit has a regular rectangular pattern. Zimmerit was an anti-magnetic paste that was applied to German vehicles in World War II. It was meant to hold magnetically attached anti-tank grenades away from the metal hull surface, preventing them from adhering properly. It was introduced in 1943 and discontinued in late 1944. Other than the Zimmerit, the hull has good strong engine grille and fan details. The turret has the later cast commander's coupler moulded on, as well as other hatch and vent detail on the turret roof. The mantlet also has Zimmerit, and is the mid-production variant without the added chin armour. There are no holes in this part. There should be a hole for the coaxial machine gun and a single hole next to the gun for the monocular gun sight. Not a big deal at this scale, and fairly easy to drill in yourself if you want to. One thing this kit doesn't have is an AA machine gun. The commander's coupler has the AA machine gun ring moulded on, but no gun or attachment points are supplied. Interestingly, Panthers didn't usually carry an additional machine gun for the AA role. They had to dismount the radio operator's gun from the hull to mount in the AA position. Initially, this wasn't common practice, but became more widespread as the threat from Allied ground attack aircraft increased. If we look at the tank commander sprue, there are five figures in hard plastic. Three are full torsos, while two are just heads. Detail is good. The decal sheet has a number of crosses and some black three-digit tactical numbers in the 400 range. There are six cut-down crosses on the front right, presumably designed to fit around some of the hull stowage. The four unit cards are a Panther Tank Company HQ card and two Panther Tank Platoon cards. More on these later. The other card is a bifold D-Day German Forces Formation card. This gives you an idea of what other units you can field with these tanks. Let's build one and see the finished product. It went together quickly and without any major issues. I would suggest maybe assembling the upper and lower hull first, then adding the tracks. They can have a tendency to tow in a bit, and this will help you see if you need to shave or trim the hull to get these straight. German players have been waiting a while for Zimmerit equipped tanks, and this looks good. The pattern is maybe a little bit regular. Zimmerit coating wore off with use or chipped and deformed. But in 15mm this looks fine. If you want to, you could always use a hobby knife to deform the edges in places. 
more trouble than I'd go to, but some people do astonishing work with their kits. Again, this is another great plastic kit, well up to the standards we expect from Battlefront Plastics. Let's look at some history. Panther, or the Panzerkampfwagen V, resulted from a 1938 project to build a successor to the Panzer III and IV. The project gained impetus in 1942 as German forces encountered T-34s and KV series tanks in Russia. Designed by MAN, Panther was rushed into service for the Battle of Kursk in mid-1943. Limited training and technical issues with the new design led to breakdowns and heavy losses. Despite weighing 45 tonnes, comparable to heavy tank designs of other nations, Panther was classified as a medium tank. Much of this weight was armour. Panther had thick front armour and used sloping, interlocking plates to maximise the effective armour thickness. Side armour was thinner to try and keep the weight down. However, shortages of strategic metals like tungsten and molybdenum meant German armour alloys became increasingly brittle towards the end of the war. Panther was armed with a powerful 7.5cm gun. The high muzzle velocity made the 7.5cm gun as effective as the Tiger's 8.8cm weapon, and the flat trajectory of the AP rounds made it very accurate. The main gun had a coaxial MG34 machine gun, with another located in a hull mount at the radio operator's position. Powered by a V12 Maybach engine, Panther had a torsion bar suspension system with large interleaved road wheels. While interweaved wheels gave good flotation and a smooth ride, they tended to clog with mud, which could freeze solid in cold weather conditions. The initial production batch of 842 Panthers were the Panther D. This was replaced by the Panther A in mid-1943, and the final version the Panther G in 1944. In all, nearly 6,000 Panthers of all types were built. Design and manufacturing issues with the initial design were ironed out, but sabotage by slave labour factory workers and shortages caused by Allied bombing were a constant problem. Panther was a complex design, although in the end it cost only a little more to produce than a Panzer IV, and half as much as a Tiger. The design served on the Eastern Front as well as in Northwest Europe and Italy. Existing Allied tanks had trouble penetrating Panther's thick armour, and could usually be engaged by the German tanks outside their own effective range. This made Panthers hard to deal with until 76mm armed Shermans and 17-pounder equipped Fireflies became available. Higher calibre towed and self-propelled AT guns were also effective, particularly as improved armour-piercing ammunition became more readily available. Panthers remained in production until the end of the war. Captured examples were heavily studied, and France used 50 Panthers in their post-war armoured forces until they could be replaced by indigenous designs. Let's look at using the Panther tank platoon on the tabletop. It's a tank unit with the Stormtrooper special rule. This means the unit may attempt a second, different movement order if it succeeded the first one it attempted. Their motivation is confident with 4+, and a last stand rating of 3+. Panther crews are veteran troops with a 3-plus skill rating. They're also careful with a 4-plus to hit them. These guys know what they're doing and will stick with the fight. Panther is well protected. Front armour is 9, side 5 and top 1. This is comparable with a Tiger on the front, although the side armour is much less. You will need to keep the enemy off the Panther's flanks. Tactical move is 10 inches or 25 centimetres with a cross of 2-plus. This means you have a good chance of traversing difficult terrain, or pulling off a follow-me order without getting stuck. The 7.5cm main gun has a 40-inch or 100cm range, a moving rate of fire 1 and a halted of 2. Anti-tank is a blistering 14, the same as a Tiger, with a 3-plus firepower. Panther is a heavy hitter that can afford to sit back at range and snipe, but has the armour to come closer and mix it up as long as you don't give away any side shots. But all this comes at a cost. Panthers clock in at 11 points each. HQs can have one or two tanks and platoons can have three to five. This quickly adds up, so unless you're playing a high points game, you'll have a limit of how many of these you can bring to the table. But Panthers were the scourge of Allied armour for a reason. 75mm Shermans with AT-10 will struggle to bail Panthers and have no chance of a kill unless they flank. 76mm guns with AT-12 have a better chance, but still not a sure thing. This means battles will only be won by the Allies by manoeuvre and solid tactical employment rather than firepower. So that's the D-Day German Panther tank platoon for Flames of War. 
It's a solid upgrade for the older Plastic Panthers, adding Zimmerit to German forces. The plastic maintains the good detailing of the existing kit, making a nice model for the table. The Zimmerit is a cosmetic change, it has no impact on the Panther's stats. It does lack the option for building a Yag Panther of the earlier plastic kit. I expect this will become available as an option later. This is a great little kit of the Panther A, and German players will be happy to see it arrive in Normandy for D-Day. Thanks to Alex at Battlefront for supplying this review copy.